kingship of Christ, which established the feast we're celebrating uh, Sunday. And the other was Quadragesimo Anno, 40 years after, which delineated a, um, a solution to the ills of the Depression. Now, what is amazing about that is that on the one hand, Pius XI seemed to bring together all the different stands, strands of Catholic social thinking in that encyclical. But then, once it was written, tons of people all over the world ran with it and sought to apply it to their own countries. But almost as, as soon as this star had risen, it began to fade. 1936 was the year of the Spanish Civil War. And that was the beginning of a uh, separation, you might say, into liberal and conservative wings of, ca of Catholic literateurs in the um, English-speaking world. Some of you may be familiar with the journal Commonweal. Now, Commonweal, like America, uh, was one of the major Catholic organs of intellectual opinion. Unlike America, Commonweal did not bang back Franco in 1936. And this was a, and then of course the Catholic worker uh, declared that uh, because of modern weaponry and so on, it's not possible to have a just war. So they weren't for Franco either. And you began to have this sort of separation in Catholic ranks. Uh, it's sort of an interesting story. When I had my first book out in 87, I went to the offices of the Commonweal in New York City to uh, get a review. Now, my grandfather, under the name John Collins, used to write for the Commonweal. So uh, I mentioned this to the fellow on the phone, and he said, well, you want to talk to Father so-and-so. He's our book review editor. I said, great. I get down there, and the receptionist says, uh, Mr. Kulo, uh, your, uh, uh, your grandfather was known to our publisher, Mr. Skillet, who's still here. He was there when your grandfather was there. Grandpa was writing for them in the 30s, and this man was still there. I can't imagine being alive that long. The man's had the same job all that time. Job security, I'll tell you what, the Catholic press. Anyway, so Mr. Skillen uh, saw me at his office, and he says, uh, now, mind you, I'd heard the story of my grandfather's breakup with the common wheel over the Spanish Civil War. And my grandfather was quite good at, at putting out the fireworks when he wanted to. So I'd already heard this story from the other end. But Skillen says to me, Yes, Mr. Coulomb, I remember your grandfather very well. When he wanted to be nice, he was as smooth as silk. When he wanted to be nasty, he was as nasty as nasty could be. And I said, yes, sir, it's a family tradition. <laughs> so he sort of looked at me, and then I went out. I didn't get a review, oddly enough. But the point is that that was the beginning of the splintering, you might say. All right, we move on. World War II comes. As a result of World War II, uh, and due to the uh, appear apparent collaboration of some of the most uh, vibrant elements of the Catholic social people in Europe with the uh, Nazis, basically Catholic social teaching as an independent thing came to an end. Quadragesimo Anno, which had been talking about corporatism and, and solidarity and all this kind of stuff, flew right out the window. And Catholic social teaching became solely anti-communism. But that was all right in a way. I mean, it wasn't all right, but uh, Catholic writers kept on writing, just not about social stuff, per se. They'd write against communism, and they'd write about it's being good to be good. And they'd write about religious things and liturgical things and cultural things. Well, then came along something called Vatican II. Vatican II... Now, we, you, you all know that it had something to do or other in the world of theology and liturgy. What you may not be aware of is that it wrecked Catholic literature, but good. Why? Nothing more to write about, in a sense, because the, uh, the Catholic identity was, for a great many people, dissipated. The Catholic culture flew out the window. Uh, there was a time, well, you remember one of, one of Father Feeney's titles was Fish on Friday. I tell you, if I brought out a book called Fish on Friday... My publisher would say, well, how about meatloaf on Monday? <laughs> it would mean as much as anything else. And with that identity, a lot of Catholic writing about cultural things and so forth was no longer applicable. And as far as theology went and devotion, well, that too sort of went out the window. 
Uh, it's interesting that dogmatic theology in the post-Vatican II seminaries became systematic theology. We, in a word, Catholic literature fell to pieces because Catholics, for the most part, no longer had anything to say that was different from what everyone else is saying. So you have writers who are Catholic, but you don't necessarily have Catholic writers. In a nutshell, and really, really, really overgeneralizing, that's your history of Catholic literature up to the present. Obviously, there are a few holdouts. Uh, I'm happy to say that the gentleman who introduced me, Mr. Potter, he um, you know, was there at the uh, tail end of this sort of thing, Tri magazine and all that. Uh, it was quite, a, quite an amazing era. Now, Father Feeney was an integral part of it all. I have in my hand a book, Catholic Authors, Contemporary Biographical Sketches, 1930 to 1947. Can you imagine a book like that being published today? Amazing. Who'd be in it? Jacqueline Suzanne? I don't know. But this came out in 47, the year of the silencing. Well, uh, not the silencing, but the year of the, the beginning of the trouble, I think. I would like to read to you, if I may, the entry on Father Leonard Feeney. Uh, individuality and a rare whimsical quality distinguished the writings of the Reverend Leonard Feeney, S.J., whether poetry or prose. He entered the Society of Jesus in 1914 at the age of 17, having been born in Lynn, Massachusetts in 1897. His early years at home and at school, taught by the Sisters of St. Joseph at Lynn and by the Jesuits at Boston College High School, are delightfully recounted in Survival Till 17. There are stories about heaven in a pond, the Chinese laundryman, the corner grocer, and Sunday evenings in the Feeney family. His parents were born in Ireland but raised in the United States, and Leonard was their eldest child. After his novitiate at St. Andrew on Hudson, Poughkeepsie, New York, later studies at Woodstock and Weston Colleges, and teaching at Canisius High School and Holy Cross College, Father Feeney was ordained at Weston by Bishop Dinan, S.J., in 1928. Tertianship at St. Bido's College, North Wales, was followed by studies at Art and Aesthetics at Wadham College in Campion Hall, Oxford, and summer courses at the Sorbonne in Paris. While in England, he was engaged also as lecturer and preacher. Upon his return to the United States, he was successively lecturer in English and professor of English literature at Boston College until 1936, when he became literary editor of the weekly America, which position he held until 1940. At present, 1947, he is teaching at the Jesuit Seminary at Weston College, Western Massachusetts. Those of you who are Father Feeney fans will recall that that is the assignment he did not take. Uh, he is in demand as a lecturer, and his topics and their treatment are refreshing. Preservation of personality, he chose as a subject on one occasion, but his purpose was not to tell how to be fascinating, he said, for charm has come through impulse. Personality he considers an art, not a science. Certainly, Father Feeney is gifted with a personal charm which seems to pervade his writings. His poems comprise four books, In Towns and Little Towns, Riddle and Reverie, Boundaries, and Song for a Listener. Here is the profundity of simple things treated with a light touch. Here are wit and originality. Father Feeney calls his poems the pygmies. Quote, I count my pygmies one by one, the nearly finished, half begun, the draggled poems I have written, companioned by a clock and kitten, on littered desk by candlelight, locked in my chamber late at night, when folks in bed were long tucked in, and maybe I had better been. His essays are equally witty and original. In addition to Survival Till 17, he has published Fish on Friday and You'd Better Come Quietly. In some outlines in the last book, here is a beautiful simplicity, uh, I'm sorry, there is a beautiful simplicity in his familiarity with divine things. A great admirer of Mother Seton, Father Feeney faithfully portrays her in her biography, uh, An American Woman, Elizabeth Bailey Seton. Your Second Childhood appeared in 1945. He also contributes to magazines. Father Feeney is a former president of the Catholic Poetry Society of America and is an Academy member of the Gallery of Living Catholic Authors. Amazing stuff, huh? You'd say he had a position in the world, wouldn't you? And in the blink of an eye, it was gone. I met people who uh, were children at the time, 1947, and I've had people tell me things about, yeah, in our poetry book, uh, 
Sister Mary Bob had us uh, cover, cover up father's poems with paper and uh, paste or cut them out of books.